Gutpasha syndrome or antiglomeral membrane disease is an autoimmune disorder that is caused by autoimmune reaction against alpha-3 chain of type 4 collagen. Autoimmune reaction induce formation of autoantibodies against glomerular membrane. Autoantibodies affect basement membranes, which are composed mostly of alpha-3 chain type 4 collagen. It's basement membranes of kidneys and lungs. Damage to these two organs cause two signature symptoms. It's hemoptysis due to the lung injury and hematuria due to the kidney injury. To explain the mechanism of clinical symptoms, we have to know the pathogenesis. So here we have basement membrane. Basement membrane composed mostly of type 4 collagen. Type 4 collagen have two alpha-4 and two alpha-5 subunits. These subunits are bonded between each other. And inside it, collagen has two alpha-3 subunits. Important that alpha-3 subunits are unexposed to the external environment. So in normal condition, they are hidden inside the collagen structure. But sometimes smoking, inflammation or infections can cause damage to collagen molecule. Damage to collagen molecule disrupt outer bonds between alpha-4 and alpha-5 subunits. As a result, alpha-3 subunits that were hidden inside the collagen structure now becomes exposed. Once collagen structure becomes disrupted, alpha-3 chains of collagen undergo phagocytosis by macrophages. And then macrophages present some parts of the alpha-3 chains on MHC2 receptors to T helpers. The logic is that antigen-presenting cells want to know is alpha-3 chains of collagen normal material or it's something pathogenic? T helpers scan alpha-3 chains and in normal condition, T helper recognize them as a normal substances and thereby they do not trigger inflammation. But some people have MHC2 receptors that are produced based on HLA-DRB1 alloys, And in this case, most probably, inflammation will develop. And to understand why, we have to know how antigen presentation occurs. In normal condition, when collagen alpha-3 chains are released, macrophage intakes alpha-3 chain in order to present it to the helpers. And antigen presentation occurs by an MHC2 receptor. What we have to know about MHC2 receptor is that it's a protein. And the genetic information that tells us how to make MHC2 receptor is contained in the gene that is located on chromosome 6, and we call this gene HLA-DRB gene. But we have different variations of HLA-DRB genes, and such variations we call owls. The simplest analogy is the eye color. You see, we all have gene that encodes the color of our eyes. But some of us have blue eyes and some of us have black eyes. And in this case, Genes that encode blue eyes we call blue owl, and genes that encode black eyes black owl. So we all have genes that encode eye color, but this gene can be different, and different variations which are blue and black colors of the same gene that in this case encodes eyes we call owls. So in case of good posture syndrome, we all have gene that encodes MHC2 receptor. We call this gene HLA-DRB gene. But this gene can be different. And different variations of HLA-DRB gene we call HLA-DRB owls. For example, if person has HLA-DRB2 owl, this person will have MHC2 receptor that was made based on genetic information in HLA-DRB2 owl. And such MHC2 receptor presents alpha-3 chains in a perfectly normal way. And when T helpers income to this receptor, they recognize alpha-3 chains as a normal substance, and because of this, they do not see any danger. If person has HLA-DRB4 all, this person will have MHC2 receptor that was made based on genetic information in HLA-DRB4 all, and such MHC2 receptor presents alpha-3 chains also in a perfectly normal way. 
thereby there will be no inflammatory response. If person has HLA-DRB5 owl, this person will have MHC2 receptor that was made based on genetic information in HLA-DRB5 owl. And such MHC2 receptor also presents alpha-3 chains in a normal way, so there will be no inflammatory response. But some individuals have HLA-DRB1 owl. Thereby, in this case, a person will have MHC2 receptor that was made based on genetic information in HLA-DRB1 owl. The problem is that this particular MHC2 receptor do not know how to present alpha-3 chains to T-helper. When T-helper is income to MHC2 receptor, in this case, because alpha-3 chain is presented in abnormal way, they cannot recognize it, and thereby they think that it's antigen. In response to any antigen, T-helpers immediately becomes activated, and subsequently they activate B lymphocytes that begin to produce autoantibodies against alpha-3 chains of collagen. So, in individuals that have HLA-DRB1 all, MHC2 receptor presents alpha-3 chains of collagen in abnormal way, and because of this, T helpers recognize it as antigen, and in response to antigen, T helpers becomes activated. Once T helper becomes activated, they activate B lymphocytes. With activation, B lymphocytes begin to produce autoantibodies against alpha-3 chain of collagen. Such antibodies we call antiglomerular membrane antibodies. Antibodies massively attack collagen molecules in the basement membrane. In alveolar membrane, the position of autoantibodies causes significant inflammation. Inflammation results in destruction of alveoli, and massive alveoli destruction causes clinical symptoms, as hemoptysis, cough, dyspnea, and chest pain. On this image, we can see lung CT in patient with good pasture syndrome. These bilateral alveolar densities are caused by destruction of alveoli, and in turn alveolar destruction causes massive alveolar hemorrhage. On this image, we can see histological samples from patient with good pasture syndrome. Here we can see the position of fibrin molecules. Fibrin deposits usually formed in response to inflammation as a protective mechanism. On this image, we can see macrophages which are full of hemosiderin. We call them hemosiderin laden macrophages. Hemosiderin is formed due to the oxidation of iron, and massive release of iron molecules into the tissues usually occurs due to the hemorrhage. So, macrophages full of hemosiderin are a sign of hemorrhage, and hemorrhages due to the basement membrane injury is the signature feature of good pasture syndrome. Also important sign is inflammation of the capillaries, because damage to the capillaries greatly increases the risk of potential hemorrhage. In glomerular membrane, the position of autoantibodies causes inflammation of the glomeruli. Usually, it's rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, which is extremely dangerous condition. Glomerular nephritis can manifest as hematuria. With hematuria, organism begin to lose red blood cells, so anemia develops. Also, with inflammation of the glomeruli, with time, glomerular filtration rate begin to decrease. As a result, oliguria can develop. Also, decrease in glomerular filtration rate leads to increase in creatinine and blood urea nitrogen level. Also, with inflammation of the glomerular membrane, protein urea develops. And with loss of proteins, oncotic pressure decreases, so edema can develop. And in addition to this, water retention combined with kidney injury can greatly increase blood pressure. On these images, we can see histological samples of kidneys in patients with good pasture syndrome. On first image, we can see epithelioid cells with crescentic glomerular nephritis. On second image, we also see crescentic glomerular nephritis, but in different staining. And on the last image, we can see a signature feature of good pasture syndrome, a linear deposition of immunoglobulin G antibodies on a basement membrane. 
The most common symptom in good posture syndrome is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Glomerulonephritis is caused by deposition of autoantibodies on glomerular basement membrane. The second most common site of injury are lungs. Lung injury caused by deposition of autoantibodies on alveolar basement membrane. Also, in good posture syndrome, we can determine general symptoms as malaise, fatigue, weight loss, arthralgias, and myalgia. The reason why general symptoms develop is that massive inflammation in the lungs and kidney tissue provokes release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And exactly massive release of pro-inflammatory cytokines cause general symptoms as weight loss, fatigue, and myalgia. And the last most common symptom is hypertension. Hypertension develops due to the fluid retention and kidney injury. The most important diagnostic marker of good posture syndrome is antiglomerular membrane antibodies. They are present in 100% of cases. So antibodies against alpha-3 chain of collagen type 4, or we call them antiglomerular membrane antibodies, are the best diagnostic marker. Among other laboratory findings, we can perform light microscopy of renal tissue, where we can find crescent formation and signs of glomerulonephritis. Immunofluorescent analysis of kidney tissue can show linear binding of immunoglobulin G along glomerular membrane, which is also a signature feature of good posture syndrome, because it's the position of autoantibodies that cause injury to the glomerulus and exactly them we can determine. And on urine analysis, we can determine hematuria, proteinuria, and on blood biochemical analysis, we can determine elevation of serum creatinine. As we know, hematuria, proteinuria, and increase in blood creatinine are all signs of kidney injury. Nowadays, according to the guidelines, for good posture syndrome, we use two major medications. The first group of medications are corticosteroids, as prednisolone. The reason is that corticosteroids induce apoptosis of lymphocytes. And because lymphocytes are the key cells in pathogenesis, with apoptosis of lymphocytes, tissue injury becomes less severe. The second group of medications are immune-suppressive drugs, as cyclophosphamide. Basically, by suppression of immune system, immune reactions become less potent, and thereby tissue injury becomes less severe. In treatment of good posture syndrome, we also use plasma exchange. The point is that by plasma exchange, we can decrease the amount of autoantibodies in the blood, and the lower the amount of autoantibodies, the less severe becomes tissue injury. The fourth group of drugs we use for prophylaxis of side defects. Antibiotics to cover immune suppression and proton pump inhibitors to cover ulcerogenic effect of corticosteroids.